Good morning, it's great to have you here at Lawson Road for another Sunday for our online worship. We are so glad to have you joining us. And uh, what a busy day it is, of course. First and foremost, it is Sunday, the Lord's Day. It's a uh, uh, time to come together and just focus on God and worship Him and, and uh, consider our relationship with Him. And that's always, uh, uh, for me, I hope for you, a high point of the week as we come around God's throne in a, a special way. Uh, but today is also Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, all the all the granddads, all the would-be dads. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of emotions that come with these special family holidays because not everybody has ideal families, do we? And uh, so sometimes there's hurt that comes with it. Sometimes because our father has, uh, isn't with us anymore for one reason or the other. Uh, sometimes that relationship isn't always great. And sometimes we wish we were fathers, but that hasn't come to pass. So just so many different emotions. But uh, we do hope that if you're a dad, that you do have a good relationship with your family. And uh, today is a special day for you. We also, uh, today is Juneteenth, one of our newer holidays. I like this. As a newcomer to the country, then uh, we're all learning together what Juneteenth is and how to celebrate it. But it's a, a day that uh, celebrates freedom. And uh, of course, there's a lot more history that goes with it. Uh, and it's a reminder that there's a lot of work still to be done. I think the idea... Uh, you know, is, is how long it took for um, the message of emancipation to reach um, Texas in particular. But it's, it's the idea that uh, even when things are in place, there's still work to do. The fact that the proclamation of emancipation had been signed didn't mean freedom for everyone. The fact that... Um, you know, the, a lot of progress has been made in the civil rights movement. Doesn't mean that, you know, everything is the way that it should be. And the fact that Jesus uh, died, is resurrected, and sits on the throne of heaven doesn't mean that the earth is the way that it's supposed to be. And so this idea of already and not yet, of freedom that's in place but isn't always experienced the way that it should be, I think uh, fits very well with the way that uh, Christianity uh, unfurls, but also our society and the struggles and challenges that we, we still face. So however you're celebrating Juneteenth today, I hope that, or tomorrow, I hope that uh, you're able to do something meaningful in considering what it means to love our neighbors, to love one another. We're going to uh, worship today. We're continuing our series on faith and so we'll go inside in just a moment and uh, get get underway but uh, we're going to play a song while we do that this is your time to uh, get your coffee get your bible get your communion supplies ready and uh, if you've already got all that please take a moment give us a thumbs up uh, to this video whether you're on facebook or youtube subscribe share the video link with a friend invite them to join you for worship you've still got time uh, not a lot of time, a little bit of time while this song plays, but uh, the video is available, of course, as soon as it finishes. It's available on YouTube or Facebook, and it'll be there uh, for several months. I hope that today you're blessed and uh, that you're able to find some calm in the storm. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil around us, a lot going on in the world, and I hope that today uh, you can bring those concerns, those worries, those fears, those anxieties, and uh, just talk to God, talk to Jesus about them, and find some peace. Brothers, let us come together, walking in the Spirit, there's much to be done. We will come reaching out from our comforts And they will know us by our love Sisters, we were made for 
for kindness. We can pierce the darkness as he shines through us. We will come reaching with a song of healing. And they will know us by our love. The time is now. Church arise, love with his hands, see with his eyes, bind it around you, let it never leave you, and they will know us by our Good morning and welcome to the Lawson Road Church of Christ worship service. We're pleased to have you here this morning. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are out there today. And what an honor it is to be a father. At this time, I have one announcement for this for our members. And that is for those who will be going to college in the fall, we have a scholarship fund in the name of one of our members. And if you are eligible for that, we ask that you fill out a, a form and return it to the church office by July 1st. Again, that is for our members who will be going to college in the fall. We have a scholarship set up in the name of one of our members. And we ask that you fill out a form and turn that into the church office by July 1st. That's all the announcements that I have for this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're always in awe of you and your mindfulness of mankind, that you have set up everything in motion for us to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And it is that our choice to do those things. You do not push your will on us. You give us free will. And we're grateful for that. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this beautiful day you've given us. But at this time, Heavenly Father, we're, we're mindful of the disasters that are taking place in the world. We're mindful of the wars and the killings that are taking place throughout this nation and throughout neighborhoods. And I ask that your will be done in all of these. For those who have lost homes and loved ones, be with them, Heavenly Father. Grant them your peace. For well, these killings and these wars that are taking place, I ask that your wisdom will dwell in men, that they would choose to do the things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. At this time, Heavenly Father, I ask that you will continue to be with us, be with those who are traveling, give them safe passage. And for us, as we 
come together today to worship you. I pray that there will be something said here today that will make each one of us want to draw closer to you. I ask this prayer in your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. There is an endless song echoes in my soul. I hear the music ring. And though the storms may come, I am holding on. And to the For today will be taken from Psalms chapter 22, verses 19 through 28, and it reads, But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouths of lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people in assembly. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All ye descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all ye descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great, the great assembly before those who fear you. I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For the dominion belongs to the Lord, and his rules over all the nations. Who raised the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, Spread. 
Today's sermon is uh, not a Father's Day message, although it may be, I hope it's applicable to, to fathers and maybe uh, it can be applied specifically to the role of fathers. I think you'll find it also highlights uh, traits of the ultimate gold standard father that is God. And so we're continuing our series on faith that are based on uh, lessons from the Apostle Peter's experience walking on water. And uh, we're going to, uh, I, I just want to read that for you. Matthew uh, chapter 24 verses 25 to 33. Sorry, Matthew 14, not 24. Matthew 14, 25 to 33. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. When I read this story, I wish that Jesus provided some commentary at the end. Maybe he could talk to the eleven in the boat and, and say, Hey, I hope you noticed how incredible Peter's faith was. He's still got a way to go, right? His knees shouldn't have got wet. But uh, he, he's way out in front of you boat potatoes that are just sitting here watching. Or maybe he could say to them something like, I hope you all learned from Peter's mistake. Don't start something if you're not prepared to finish it. Something like that. Jesus, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Is Peter to be admired or criticized? Is this an example for us to follow or a warning for us? Now, why is it? In the scripture, what are we what are we to do with it? Well, that question of how we evaluate it is one that, as we read it, we may come to our own decision about that. But I land in the camp that says we should admire Peter. He attempted something that was audacious. The other 11 didn't even have the idea that they could walk to Jesus. Maybe you and I, probably you and I, wouldn't have that idea either. We would sit there and go, look, there's Jesus walking on the water. Hello, Jesus. Peter says, hey, can I come and join you? Even after they heard Peter ask, even after they heard Jesus' answer. They didn't chime in and say, hey, me too, me too. I'd, I'd like to come out, Peter. I'd like to come out, Jesus. Instead, they were quite content staying in the safety of the boat. What happened next to Peter is something that's very common in our life, isn't it? Our reality doesn't match our expectations. I don't know what Peter's expectations were for walking on water. He probably didn't really have a lot of time to really develop expectations. But whatever it was, it didn't include the wind. Because Peter's doing just fine walking towards Jesus. Then the text tells us that he saw the wind. And, and to see the wind when you're out on a lake, you're going to see the waves. You're going to see the, the impact of the wind 
upon the the water is really i i think what he what he saw the way that the wind was whipping up the the waves and it's amazing how quickly our positivity our hopes our expectations can transform into fear anger and grief the the movement from our emotional highs to emotional lows can occur in such a short span of time have you ever celebrated receiving a job offer and then just a short period of time you hate the job and realize that you you shouldn't have ever accepted it and, and that day that was such a tremendous celebration now feels like a tremendous burden on your back have you ever had something ruin a vacation you you go to the beach you're all excited you've been planning this for for months and then you get a terrible sunburn the first day and it makes it hard to enjoy the rest of the time or your car breaks down or your plane is late getting you there or something so these things that we've we've looked forward to and it's going to be so exciting so, such a a great thing all of a sudden is filled with all these negative attitudes towards it maybe you can picture a wedding the magical day where everything is perfect and then the newlyweds receive the bills for the wedding and all of a sudden there's tension there's stress and and it's like the the perfection seems in, instantly uh, contaminated you see life has this way of getting us at our best moments and, and dragging us down and when life throws us these curveballs how do we respond how resilient are we how do we avoid despair now there are lots of ways to answer that question but i want to suggest two uh, for us today they are presence and affirmation presence and affirmation Judges chapter 6 tells the story of Gideon. Life isn't going as expected for Gideon. He's hiding, trying to uh, uh, harvest some grain and thresh it to, so, so that the grain can be removed from the stalk and provide food for his family without it being stolen by... Um, desert bandits that have been coming through and, and just taking whatever crops they can whatever food they can and um, God sends an angel to Gideon and and as Gideon is hiding and doing this looking over doing this work looking over his shoulder uh, trying to protect himself and his his food in, in Judges 6 and verse 12, the angel comes and greets Gideon. And, and it's, it says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Presence and affirmation. The Lord is with you, presence, mighty warrior. Affirming who Gideon is. What Gideon is about to be called for Gideon at that point doesn't even know that he's a mighty warrior but God says I know who you are and what you can do there's another story that I referenced uh, several weeks ago that uh, we'll take a moment and, and read it this time it's in first Kings uh, and uh, chapter 19 it's the story of Elijah and I'm not reading all of it uh, but Elijah has had this uh, great victory over the prophets of Baal uh, on top of a mountain. And God has sent fire from heaven that has consumed uh, the, the false prophets, the prophets of Baal. And then the, the queen has said, okay, Elijah is responsible for my prophets being killed. And puts out, uh, a, a, puts out the roadblocks, puts out a... Uh, a shoot on sight kind of order for Elijah. And so Elijah runs and he, he, he keeps on 
running until he gets to the wilderness. And we pick up the, the story here in uh, starting in verse 9 of First Kings chapter 19. God has just sent an angel to encourage uh, Elijah. The angel has given him some food, told him to take a nap, and then uh, uh, said, go to this cave and God is going to meet you there. The word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. There a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Maholah, to succeed you as prophet. Yehu will be put to death, uh, will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Yehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. There's a lot happening in, in that story. But twice, God asks Elijah, What? Are you doing here? I think there's a, a lot of aspects. It'd be great to have the tone of voice that God uses when he asks that question. But for today, I just want to point out how we see God's presence in that question. He doesn't ask, hey, Elijah, what are you doing over there? Right? He's, Elijah is at the lowest point in his life. He's out in a cave in the wilderness. Um, and God says, what are you doing here? It's like, I found you, Elijah. You, you haven't got away from me. I'm still here with you. And, and so, Elijah, when you confronted Jezebel's prophets with the fire, with the, the fireworks, with the spectacular display of power. I was with you. And now in the silence, in the wilderness, in the cave, I'm still with you. Now, as you hear this, you it may seem like the point is perhaps a familiar sermon application. You've got God, everything will be okay. But God doesn't even say that here. God doesn't tell Elijah that the solution to his problem is to pray more. He doesn't tell Elijah that the solution 
is to read the Bible more. He doesn't even tell Elijah that the solution is to sit in the cave in silence and experience God's presence more. You see, God has demonstrated his presence. But now he affirms Elijah by giving him something to do. He says, I want you to go to Aram, the, 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 the nation to the north of Israel. And he says, I want you to anoint a king there. An Aramean king. And then he says, I want you to go and find this other person and you're to anoint them the king, the next king. Yehu will be the next king of Israel. Okay. And, and then he says, I want you to go and anoint a prophet who will ultimately be your replacement. There's work to be done. I'm with you. I need you to do this work and you can do it. But, but notice also how God reassures Elijah. He says, there are 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to Baal. Twice Elijah had told God that he was the only one left. God said, no, Elijah, I've got 7,000 more. And uh, and then on top of that, he says, I want you to uh, Elisha, who you're going to anoint, who you're going to anoint as a as a prophet. He says, now you've got a companion, somebody that you can train and teach and someone who will be with you. Uh, God doesn't just say, hey, Elijah, you've got me. You don't need anyone else. He says, no, you I know you need other people. And so this principle of presence and affirmation in the face of crisis can totally change the, the outcome or our perception of the outcome. Back on the Sea of Galilee, I, I don't know how Peter felt as he walked on the water, but I imagine he felt pretty good. <laughs> That's got to be amazing to be doing that. And we're not told if he went... Like just a, a little bit, you know, was it just a few steps, three, four, five steps away from the boat? Or was he like 20, 30, 50 steps out there when he started to, to sink? But however he felt, it changed quickly. Suddenly he looks around and he sees the wind. And he starts to sink. But Jesus is right there. He puts out his hand. He grabs Peter. And, and we see that presence there. And then he asks, he says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, again, the tone of voice is important here. It could be like, hey, where's the affirmation, Jesus? But I, I think like Elijah, Jesus is saying, Peter, I believed in you. I told you to come. Like, I knew you could do this. Uh, you could have finished it, but don't worry. Don't worry. There'll be other opportunities to live out your faith in the future. So I, th I, I still think that that statement is, is one of... Um, contains some, some elements of affirmation in there. I, I think there's certainly a little disappointment, but uh, certainly not a, a scolding or a criticism of, of Peter, but one that, that says, Peter, you could have done it. You could have done it. You're right there. And I think that kind of encouragement when things don't go well, which is really what we're talking about, isn't it? God could have said to Elijah, Elijah, you're such a loser how can you change so quickly Gideon you're hiding you're a coward but instead it's like no you've got faith you're a mighty warrior Elijah I need you to anoint two kings and and a prophet for me and uh, so so God um, demonstrates his faith in in each of these people um, at, even at their lowest 
point in the in their lives. And then I think of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, just as we close, in his moment of isolation and despair before his death. He cries out to God and he's saying, God, is this really what you want me to do? Is there another way that we can do it? And uh, in, in the Gospel of Luke, and it's the only Gospel that has this particular detail, uh, we find there that um, God hears Jesus. And in verse 43, it says there that an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. God is saying, I'm with you, Jesus. You can do this. And, and I think the application today is pretty simple for us. Don't despair. God is with you. And together, you and God can get through whatever life throws at you. But there's a, a second point as well, because it's not just about you and God, me and God. God puts people in our lives. And, and sometimes that presence and affirmation comes from the people that God has put into our lives. We need to be reminded that we have value, that we're not alone. But also, sometimes other people are put in our lives so that we can give them that message uh, that, that when someone we know is struggling with life that we don't need to have all the answers and, and i know that's really hard that we want to problem solve and we want to fix things some of us more than others but the starting point of all of that is simply presence and affirmation god loves you I'm here for you. We can get through this with a little bit of faith. Good morning, church, and greetings to those of you who are watching online. I hope that you've been able to get outside this week and enjoy some of the warmer weather that has been so long in coming. In order to prepare us for the Lord's Supper this morning, I'd like to read some verses from the 18th chapter of John, beginning at verse 33. In this situation, Jesus has been summoned a second time before Pilate, so that Pilate can determine what to do with him. And it reads, Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. It is certainly easy for us to find fault with Pontius Pilate, because he seemingly did not have the courage to act consistently with his findings. History also tells us that later on Pilate was relieved of his command as governor, because of the extreme brutality that he often inflicted on his own subjects. But within this reading, he did some things that were noteworthy. First, he looked objectively at the case against Jesus and came to the correct conclusion that he had done no wrong, committed no crimes, certainly nothing requiring the death penalty that the crowd was, was screaming for. He then asked Jesus a truly profound question that, every one of us ought to ask many times in our own lives, what is truth? Now, if Pilate had been sincere in his quest for the truth, I am confident that Jesus would have been able to enlighten him. After all, whether Pilate knew it or not, 
he was standing face to face with the living embodiment of the truth. But before Jesus could respond, Pilate turned and walked out of the room. We're entering a part of our worship that is designed to bring us face to face with the living truth. That truth is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the time we encounter this truth and measure ourselves against it. Please pray with me while we, before we partake of the emblems. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you for all the ways that you have revealed truth to us. In your word, in the tremendous life that Jesus lived, and in the meaning of his sacrificial death. As we come face to face with him and encounter truth, we pray that we will not turn and walk away, but we will make ourselves vulnerable to the truth that he teaches us, and may our lives reflect that truth. We pray these things through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Thank you for spending time with us this morning. We're glad that you're able to join us today. Before I start with the Shepherd's Blessing, I wanted to give you a quick update on Walk for Water. Most of you know Walk for Water. We did that last week on the 12th of June. And yes, it was a great success. And I want to thank everyone that participated in any way. By the nearest uh, count that we've got, 45 folks walked with us from the church building to Lakeshore Elementary and back. Now, there were questions about the weather. Uh, it did rain on us, only while we were taking a little break at the uh, Lakeshore Elementary School. And the only thing that was going to stop us from doing that walk would have been thunder. And yes, it did thunder, but it thundered Im almost immediately after we dismissed the whole group after the walk was complete. So it was a great day. God blessed us greatly on it. Uh, we met our goal 
of earning enough money for one well to be uh, dug, that's $7,500. But we would like to continue uh, progressing on that to where we can earn enough money for a well, as well as uh, raised bed gardening and World Bible School materials to a village. So we would like to continue that and you can donate still through Healing Hands International through their website, hhi.org. Again, we wanna thank you for being here. Let's close our time together in prayer. Holy Father, it has been good to be gathered together in your name today. I thank you for the way that you have blessed this family that gathers together at Lawson Road and, and together here virtually on Lawson Road. Father, we are a blessed family and we thank you for those blessings. We thank you for the encouragement that you provide our way. We thank you that last week was a success in the walk for water. We thank you that you have blessed us so that we can share your love for others that we will never meet. But we thank you that we can do so. Father, we do want to pour our hearts out to you that we have concerns, we have cares. We have many amongst our uh, family that have cancer. And Father, we, we know that cancer is indeed a, a feared uh, illness and situation. Father, we ask that you would strengthen them. We ask that medically they would be able to be treated and the treatments would be easy to tolerate. We ask for strength for the body. We ask for encouragement for the spirit. We ask for strength for their soul, Father, and encouragement through others that they would be able to, to heal and get better. Father, we know that there are other reasons that people are sick and in the hospital. And we ask, Father, that, that they would be comforted, that your spirit would continue to encourage them, and that you would encourage them through the touch and the talk of others. Father, help us each to love each other the way we should. We also recognize, Father, there are many that are dealing with, with COVID still. It's not gone from us. And Father, we ask that you would be, be pleased to uh, continue to protect those that need the protection. Father, we ask that those that have COVID would, would be able to recover uh, quickly and fully. They would have no lingering problems. We ask for safety and wisdom for those that make decisions on where they go or where people go and, and how to protect each other. We ask, Father, for particular strength and encouragement for those that, because of COVID or other reasons, are not able to get out and uh, fellowship and to be around others. Uh, you did not make us to be lone individuals, Father, and loneliness is indeed a very, very heavy burden. And we ask, Father, for your comfort. We ask for opportunities that they and that we would seek to help minimize that time, to reduce the loneliness. Father, for those that are, that are in nursing homes or assisted living, we ask for your strength. We ask for your encouragement in their lives. We ask, Father, that you would watch over our children, we thank you for them. We thank you that uh, school is now drawing to a close. And we ask that, that they would have a good summer, a summer of uh, rest, uh, relaxation, that they would enjoy the time together and that they would be blessed and that you would keep them safe. We further ask for safety, Father, for, for the travelers. We know it's a busy time of the year that people start moving about the country. And we ask, Father, that you would bless them with safety. Grant our leaders wisdom, Father. We certainly... Uh, have great needs in our country, and we ask, Father, that your spirit would be active in guiding the hearts of those that, that are in the place to make decisions. Father, again, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that you hear our prayers. We are such a blessed people, and we recognize, Father, that you love us so much. We thank you. Thank you for all you have done for us. Be with us this week. Strengthen our hearts. Encourage our, our minds. And Father, thank you for all you do. Through Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day.
Oh, happy day. 